All right, so welcome back to Has to Glory. I am currently quintuple layered because it is so cold in Britain uh, at this current moment in time, but I'm still locked. We're here. We're going to Austria, round number seven. Last episode was a bit of a madness, really, to say the least, because as you can see there, uh, I took the W, and it's safe to say that my run of form in this series have been on par with my Ayrton Senna career mode, where I'm in the best car on the grid. In a Haas, which at the moment is currently rated as the second worst car, I have got three seconds and a first. So hopefully, as we head into a load of tracks that I'm quite bad at, those results, like, on purpose start becoming a bit worse, uh, but we'll see. Austria, round seven, qualifying, let's go. All right, so welcome to qualifying. Now, I completely forgot that Austria is, of course, a sprint weekend. I, I do kind of wish that you could turn off sprint weekends in career mode, because I don't think I'm in the minority when I say this, but I really hate the sprint race, like, format and just the whole concept of a sprint race in Formula One. I just don't think it works. Um... Which means, yeah, as, as usual, foot crim, uh, the future foot crim, you've got a long head ahead of you, mate, so have fun. Anyway, sector one is going to come through, of course, because sprint qualifying is so much shorter than normal qualifying, rather than it being 18 minutes, it's only 12 minutes. Uh, no one else has set a lap time yet, so I've got nothing to compare myself to, but sector one didn't feel too bad. The car feels all right, especially on the rear. I have said in many videos in the past that... I really hate oversteer and an unstable rear, but I know I'm on brand new softs on low fuel, so it's going to feel nice. Uh, it's nicely balanced, I will say. Into the penultimate corner, you got to be very brave and committed. That was neither of those things. Final corner, that was a bit air. We crossed the line to put in a 1 minute 4.9, which is currently ahead of Oscar Piastri, half a second off Ricardo and ahead of my teammate, but has my teammate actually done a lap yet? I don't think so. So here comes them two drivers. Oh no, they've both actually gone into the pit, so... Wait, have they? Yeah, they have. Oh, so they, they... So Oscar Piastri has actually gone P20. Wow, okay. So the Haas boys, P18 and P20, it's not fantastic, but hey, like I said, I was sort of hoping my results would get worse, naturally, and they sort of are, so I don't mind, really. It does sound a bit bonkers when you think about it, but I am actually pleased about the fact that I'm 18th, not like 3rd. But let's be honest, I'm in the second slowest car. I shouldn't be, you know, fighting for podiums with having the pace to go for podiums. I'm supposed to be with my teammate at the back of the grid. Here at a sector time, so sector 1, uh, I actually got a really good sector 1 in me. I'm actually faster than everyone in the bottom 10. And then my Sector 2 is definitely on the very weaker side. And my Sector 3 is actually sort of there or thereabouts. So I need to try and find about three temps in Sector 2 to be, like, really competitive. And then an extra temp in Sector 3, which I, I think, yeah, It will take a very, very good lap, but it's definitely not impossible. Right, I kind of forgot about that. Because sprint qualifying is so mid... You only get one set of softs for the entire of SQ1. I completely forgot that was even a thing. So there's a decent chance that I won't be able to improve on my second run because my tyres are now used. I'm going to do another run anyway because why not? But that's really cringe. Like This is why I don't like sprint weekends. It, I hate it. And just before I start this final qualifying lap, if you could please like the video because... Uh, yeah, it's 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 more helpful than you could ever possibly imagine. So if you could do that, that'd be class. Let's start this final run, and like I said, I doubt I'm going to improve. If I do, it'll be like by such a small margin. I'm definitely not finding the time I need to, uh, which is like three to four temps. Through sector one, I'm going to be about 20 milliseconds down on myself, but I've actually had a really nice turn three, or is it two? Because don't they count that little tiny slope left the corner when it obviously just isn't? Now here I actually braked way too late. So if I go a bit more inwards, get the exit. Hang on a minute here. I've actually found a little bit of time. Okay, cool. Really pushing the car through there. And my goodness, how have I managed to find time? I am going to start losing all of it though. Because I've got no ERS left. But that was very committed. That was a lot more committed than my first run. Into the final corner. That was a lot better. And somehow I've not gained time. And I do improve, but I don't think it's going to be anywhere to gain a position, and no, it isn't. So we finished P18. 
Um, I think that is still ahead of my teammate, and that's all you can really ask for. But how did I lose a tenth for coming into that final two corners? Because that was definitely faster. At least it felt faster than my first run. So there are the results. I only actually outqualified my teammate by eight uh, fucking five milliseconds, which is an idea. And then there's a two tenth gap. More than that, a free tenth gap to Alexander Albano. That is, that's quite big. But at least we outqualified Sergeant, and that's the main thing. So, P18 for the sprint race. I don't really care about the sprint race at all. To be honest, I might just skip it. To be honest, um, yeah, let's go. Sprint race time, eight laps, medium tires. Let's just try and gain some places and just. I don't know. Let's be honest, this sprint race is entirely pointless. We're P18 and it's only eight laps, but we're going to do it anyway. Let's have a good crack at it and give it some. And here we go then, race number one of the weekend. Let's at least have a good start. Good little practice session, this. A little white warm-up race. And note my car's going to do that weird bottoming out thing. And I'm immediately relegated to P20. I'm not going to let this happen. I'm going to send it on Sergeant up the inside. And yeah, if any, I, I still don't know why my car does that. Like, why? Not only does it bottom out on the start, but I'm getting oversteer in gear 5. I seriously don't understand why that happens. Like, this game's handling is really, really poor. And why are my exits so bad as well? I'm losing like two temps on the exits from the AI. I have that problem in my center career mode as well. For some reason, my corner exits are just so awful. And I don't know why. Because if I use any more throttle, I spin. So, I don't get it. I also have no ERS battery. Like, it might as well just not be here. I've barely used overtake. And I've already used 80%. And the recharge is very bad. So... That is an idea. We finished lap one. I believe we are in the same place. It's just... Okay, well, we're not in the same place anymore. Because for some reason, why is Hulkenberg on the inside there? I mean, I'm not complaining. It's a free position gate. But I don't know. A bit dodgy defending from him. Uh, we're now we're now actually up a place. So that, that's quite interesting. Let's make it another. I forgot that AI do that. Like, I don't know why they like break so early. But look at my exit here. Like, huh? How? Why are their exits so good? How am I meant to compete with that? I go for a move, I break later, I get the inside line, I get the move done, and they just have the best exit I've ever seen, and they're gone. Sure. I have got a really strong sector free in me, though. Well, well, the final two corners, at least, are very, very strong. I'm, like, only sticking with these cars because of my like, final two corners. They're very, very nice. So, yeah, this time, I'm sending it on Albon, and... I don't, I'm not letting the exit get the better of him. Here we go. Down the inside. And then what I'm going to do is also go down the inside of Gazi. I'm going to push him off. And it doesn't matter because he still gets a good exit. But mine is slightly better this time. Come on, baby. No, he's got that straight line speed advantage. I can still send this, though. He's going to block me off a little bit. Down the inside of Alex Albon. It's a little bit dodgy. Uh, but it's fine. We get the move done. Up to P16 now. And, uh, yeah. Honestly, although I'm, like, egregiously slow, even though my exits are really bad compared to the AI, the car itself actually feels okay, so it's not too bad. And here we go, the final lap of this sprint race. I've done it to Gazi. I'm going to try it on Bottas, where you go around the outside of turn one, and that is a perfectly executed move. Look at Foot Crim, Oliver Behrman, fantastic racecraft. Now I need to try and hold off. Bottas is going to have DRS and he's going to be mighty with it. And I actually do believe that the reason my exits are so bad around here is that I am genuinely not using enough Thrall. But that's what happens when I try and use more Thrall. So it's a very tricky one. It might just be honestly just a lack of confidence in this car. But I am not trying to go full Thrall on the exit of that corner because I do think I will die, even if I might not. But at the moment, P14 is actually quite a good result. Some nice overtakes. Uh, my lap times have been extremely consistent on this medium tire, and honestly, I have, I have half treated this as a practice session. I now have a whole medium stint under me, so now in the race, hopefully, I'll be a bit more prepared for that. And the car feels fantastic, so nothing to complain about really. My final two corners, like I said, have been very, very strong. And there you go, end of the sprint race. A massive kerfuffle up ahead is P14, and honestly, it's a pretty good result if you think about it. That's that's that's, that's good. That is good. I like it. Nice. 
And yeah, that's that's pretty good actually, you know. Very consistently, you know, sort of fast laps times. I mean, the first like couple like not very good, but you know, seven two, six seven, six nine, seven dead, six six. They're all pretty good lap times, and there's a lot of positives from that. So in my books, that is a W. And now we head into qualifying for the actual Grand Prix. Oh, hang on a minute here. Sorry, I was just drinking my Karuba Elderflower Red Bull. Um, I was about to introduce you lot to qualifying with the benchmark lap times, but look at that. Weather, 10 minutes time, rain. So I think I'm going to go out now, which is way earlier than normal. I usually go out with 10 minutes left and two minutes left. I'm going now because it's about to start raining. And, you know, obviously, if I go out and it's raining, I'm finished. So get me out there now. And here we go. We need to make this lap big. The rain is starting to fall. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get a whole lap complete before the rain is like actually affecting track times. So this is actually a very important lap. This is basically my only run I'm going to get. I've definitely improved my exits out of turn three. I think it is actually turn three, like confirmed. And I've had a very nice sector one, but I've braked a bit too early through there. But honestly, it's fine. On the exit, bit of oversteer, still fine. Maybe lost like two hundredths. Gonna go really wide into the first fast left. Don't want to go on that curb. Whoa, that was a bit difficult, but you know we're managing just fine. Avoid that inside curb. We've got an Alpine in front. Get a nice little slipstream off him. Thank you so much, whoever that is. Into the final two corners. Nice and fast and committed through there. And through there. Nice. Decent lap. We come across the line. It's going to be a 1 minute 4.6. Which is actually behind my teammate. And is it just me or has my game got louder? I swear my game has got louder. Well, anyway, fact of the matter is, uh, even though that lap was very good, I'm actually behind my teammate by about half a tenth. So, not ideal, but this qualifying is a bit mad, really. We've got Piastri in the McLaren P12, Signs P16. Like, it's a bit mad, really. But I can't quite explain to you how my game has just suddenly increased audio, but look at this. Nico Hulkenberg has just put in a 4.3 uh, 4 to go P9 overall, which is currently 3 temps, nearly 4 temps up on me. Yeesh, our Sector 1s are about this, literally just Sector 2 again, and that seems to be the place where I'm losing a lot of my time, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do a second run because I believe the rain is going to start falling, so tricky one. Right, it's time for the final run. The rain is falling, and I don't think I'm going to be able to improve on my lap time. But you know I'm going to give it a good go anyway. Here we go. Let's begin and try and find some time through Sector 2. Come on, baby. And there's just nothing I can do. The rain is too heavy. And we come around the final two corners, and yeah, I don't, I, I don't think I'm improving on this lap time. Yeah, it's, 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 there's nothing I can do. I still think that lap is actually very good, given the fact that it is raining. But it's just, yeah, there's no improvement to be found. And it's just really annoying that my Sector 2 is so poor. I don't know why. I don't, uh, unfortunately, because F124 is quite a mid-game, you can't, like, look at individual corners. Like, you can see Sector times, and it's, well, Sector 2 is quite big. It starts at the end of the second DRS and ends after the second fast left. There's no way to tell if it's one specific corner, the whole thing, I don't know. But fact of the matter is, my Sector 2 is about three tenths off the pace, and because of it, I'm actually going to finish in P15 in qualifying, which really isn't that bad. Ahead of a Ferrari, you know, it's not awful. But my teammate Hulkenberg, I believe, is going to be P9, and if I manage to find those extra three tenths, I'll be right there with him. But... You know what? It's whatever. So here's your final order, and look at that. Nico Hulkenberg, P9. What a lap time that is. Oliver Bettman, P15. Like I said, it ain't awful. Uh, obviously, when you look at the fact that I'm, you know, three and a bit temps off my teammate, it isn't fantastic. Um, but it's not the end of the world. It's, it's definitely not bad. Uh, we go into the race, P15. Hopefully, Hulkenberg maybe can score some points. But we'll see. We'll see. Into the Grand Prix we go. E-I-E-I-E-I-O. 
Welcome to Domingo! Is that Sunday in Spanish? I think it is. Uh, anyway, Austrian Grand Prix starting P15. Nice sunny day. Uh, medium stints are very quick. I'm very good on the medium. Strategy is probably going to be a medium hard. Let's be honest, it always is. And uh, let's go. Any 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 grid penalties? Uh, yes. One grid penalty. Look at that. So we actually start P14 for the race. Medium hard, like I said. Let's lower the fuel. And I, I'm actually debating about lowering my downforce. Oh, sorry, increasing my downforce. Because my straight line speed actually seems quite competitive. I'll leave it for now. But if I see that I have a clear advantage, I might uh, increase the downforce. Because what's the point of having straight line speed, which you're supposed to use to defend, in P14? It's kind of pointless. But anyway, let's hope that I can have a much better start than the sprint race. Because let's be honest, that just absolutely stunk. And without further ado, Austrian Grand Prix. Round number seven, let's go. All right, come on, please let my start be a little bit better this time. I still don't know why my game is increased volume by like double, but it's fine. And it's a little bit of wheel spin, but I think it is a better start. And here's Oscar Piastri, really, really poor start off the line. And we are going free wide into turn one. This isn't gonna work. I'm gonna have to go off track a little bit, get on throttle. We are wheel to wheel with Oscar and Esteban Ocon. And I don't think I can really do anything about them at the moment, to be honest. I believe that they are just going to go wheel to wheel, and that's not going to give me any opportunity. But hang on a minute here. Carlos Sainz, where have you come from then? Oh, going around the outside of the Alpine. We go three wide. And because of my poor exits, I don't even make an impact. Okay, cool. Um, so that was an interesting start. I've dropped two places because of Carlos Sainz's dive bomb and Ocon, like, you know, having it out for me. In fact, I'm going to try slip on the inside. Nope, not going to work. Okay, so interesting first couple of exchanges. We've lost two places because of Ocon just defending me, but no one else for some reason. And then, and then he blocks me. Like, is this guy all right? Go away, please. I'm going past you, and there's nothing you can do about it, lad. I'm really quick through here, and there's nothing you can do. Bye, Ocon. Okay. So we do manage to gain one place. Still one down from where we started, but it's something positive at least. And there is the end of lap one. This really annoys me. Look, why do the AI break so early? Like, I have to drive so slow. It just encourages dive bombs. Anyway, fastest sector one for Ronnie Behrman, somehow. Exits are still just as bad. They are going to be just as bad. I cannot get my confidence up in this car. It, just, it ain't going to happen. I apologize. It's just not. Um, on high fuel, the car is evidently a lot worse. But we're chilling at the moment. It is a bit frustrating that I have to be stuck behind a Ferrari and a McLaren, which are going to be a lot quicker than me, which means I might not be able to stick with their DRS. But at the moment, it's it, it, it's stable. Do you know what I mean? And that's a crazy thing to look at there. I've actually set the fastest sector one and three. Once again, my sector two just being extremely poor, costing me so much time, but it's fine. And we have a yellow flag. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up. Hold up. Relax. Chill out. What just happened? Round turn one. Someone. Who? You? The Salba. The Salba of Zhou Guan Yu, I believe this is. So their engine goes. Turns right. Albon then stops. Hamilton tries to go, he gets round the outside, crashes into Guan Yu Zhou, Piastri goes round the outside, Sainz cuts left, and that leaves nowhere for me to go. What do I even do in this situation? Like, where do I flash back to? Because, realistically, if I go to, like, here, I'm just gonna, like, overtake about nine cars. So, like, do I just... You know what? I'll flash back to, like, here, and I'll just stay behind Sainz. Cool? Alright, let's carry on. So no, I'll just do this. I'll just... Uh, th and they just stopped. What do you want me to do? They just stopped. Right. Okay. Sure. And now we have... I love this game. I really do. Unreal. Really well developed. It's really well made. Uh, truly one of a kind experience that you get with this game. I, I really, really like it. <laughs> this game is really bad though. Like, on a real note. Um, I made a community post recently. So I'm like, why does everyone complain about it? It's just the bugs, really, and the bad AI. That's about it. The rest of it's, like, decent-ish. Uh, but, yeah, we have a safety car, which, honestly, there is a world where I can go onto the hard tyres and do a 20-odd lap stint. 
I don't know if I want to do that, though, to be honest. I don't think I actually I want to actually do that. That would be a lot of ag. I think I might just stick my strategy. Let's see what everyone else does, though. So we got... No, wait. People are stopping. You know what? We are going to stop. Might as well take a gamble. Uh, let's do it. Oh, someone's had a massive lockup going into the pits there. But yeah, we might as well just take a gamble. Uh, actually, when I say take a gamble, more than half the grid has come in, so... I guess it just isn't that. And on. Right, well, somehow I've gained a place, even though I just lost, like, half a year in the pits... I don't, I'm not sure how that's happened, but sure. Okay, so we exit the pits P10. I went into the pits in P11. Hulkenberg is two places up in P7. That, that's three places up, actually. And we're now in P10. So, yeah. Cool. <laughs> I'm just I'm just confused. Sorry, I'm, I'm a bit baffed. All right, safety car in this lap on lap number seven. Most of the field, actually, I, I think actually everyone has stopped and made their stop during the safety car period so now it's just going to be 18 19 laps of hard stint running and i'm in p10 let's see what the boy can do my tires are very cold though and for some reason no matter how much turning i do even if i get out this old classic they aren't warming up whatsoever so we'll just have to deal with that but let's just focus on a nice restart which should happen any second now and we are away. Now, remember, of course, you can't overtake until the start-finish line. But I've got a really nice run on Alexander Albono going to turn one. I know this strategy very well. He goes to the inside. I can swoop around the outside and take the posse. And then I spin because this game's really bad. Okay, sure. Right, hello, Axe Albon. I'm going to try this move again. It didn't work last time, but this time... I've got heated up tyres, round the outside, easy textbook stuff, and Oliver Behrman is up to P9, Hulkenberg in P7, and I've actually managed to drop Carlos Sainz. What is going on? The Haas boys having a fantastic race at the moment. Come on then. Let's try and get right up to Hulkenberg. That could be quite nice. We can, we can help each other gain places. All right, as you can see, the car ahead, which I believe is an RB, as I'm trying to go around the outside of Stroll, and I manage it, and I am making that my little signature overtaking spot. Up to PA now. And yeah, as you can see, the RB, I don't know who that is. It's actually Yuki Tsunoda. He doesn't have DRS. Hulkenberg does. So, if Hulkenberg can get by him, then I can get by him, and then we move up to P, what, 6 and 7? But, Sonoda is starting to catch up to the leading pack, because there's a Ferrari and a Mercedes, that'd be Leclerc, and it's not even a Mercedes either, it's a Fernando Alonso, they're scrapping, which is allowing Sonoda to catch up, which is very, very cringe. To be honest, I don't really want to overtake my teammate in this fashion, because it is humiliating, but I am going to do it. Hulkenberg, see you later, lad. You are useless. I'm joking, you're having a fantastic race. Now, what I want to try and do is keep Hulkenberg in my DRS. That is all I'm going to try and do. I need to somehow keep Hulkenberg in my DRS whilst also keeping myself in Sonoda's DRS and try and get him to catch back up. Look at Fat Krim playing the team game. What a driver I am. No, come on, Hulkenberg, get back in. Come on, come closer, 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 closer. Hulkenberg, please. Hulkenberg, please. No, I'm trying. Look how slow I'm driving just to keep him within DRS. Does he even have it? Oh, he doesn't. Oh, shit. Okay, wait. Go back. Go back. Just drop back. Drop back. Drop back. No, he's going to get done by Stroll. No, no, no. Oh, for goodness sake. Fight, Hulkenberg. Fight. Please. He's not got DRS. He's done. Oh, my goodness. Hulkenberg, when he needed to be quick, does the ultimate sluggish of 2024. And he also loses the place to Alex Albon now and is a fear of dropping out from the points. Oh, hang on a minute. Wait. Hulkenberg, come back. He's back up to P7 here. And this is a dilemma that I have to face with myself. Yes, I am quicker than Sonoda. I might even be, in fact, quicker than Alonso. I can see myself getting those two places and finishing P5. But Hulkenberg, I can easily... 
try and help out. So is it better to go for a P5 and there's a, a high potential of failing? Or do I try and help my teammate gain a place or two? And I realize now that's a very stupid question. Of course, we're going to try and move forward. Let's do this thing. We still have 11 laps left. And there's plenty of time for Hulkenberg to come back. But I'm focused on moving upwards. And once again, it's looking like I'm about to achieve a very unrealistic result. But that's just the name of this series at this point. Round the outside of Yuki Tsunoda. Fastest sector one into turn three. And I already have one place up. Next up is going to be Fernando Alonso. And then Charlie, who doesn't have DRS. And yeah, I don't know why I'm so quick on these hard tyres, to be honest. I am absolutely electric. And yes, before anyone asks, this is on 110 AI. There's nothing on there. There's nothing more I can do about it. I am just that good of a driver. And you know what? Maybe I should credit myself a bit more often. Maybe I should say to myself, no, you are just a good driver. I don't think I am, but maybe I should at some point, because realistically, I'm on the hardest difficulty in the game. Yes, the AI are a lot worse this year than last year, but um, I'm still driving well, okay? Now, Fernando Alonso, how do I tackle you? I think what I'm going to do is go around the outside, give myself DRS, focus on a good exit, which I get, and now I've got the DRS to get away. Fernando Alonso doesn't have it. Which means with a little bit of overtake, and somehow he's keeping up with me here. Eh? I'm not happy about that at all. Outbreak him. He is going to go for it, so I'm obligated to give him space. But bosh! Oliver Behrman up to P5. And the other cars are quite close. I don't know if I can get in their DRS, though. Because at the end of the day, it is a McLaren and a Ferrari. All gone off a bit there. I don't know. It's going to be difficult. Right, so over the last few laps, there has been a lot of scrapping go on. And, well, the outcomes is Fernando Alonso has gained two places, gone from P6 to P4. Dano Norris has gone from P4 to P3. Lewis Hamilton, sorry, George Russell, wrong one, I've done a David Croft, has gone from, uh, uh, hang on, P3 to P6. And Oliver Behrman, P5 to P4. There it is. What a driver. Do you know what I mean? I like it how I'm just talking about positional changes whilst overtaking Fernando Alonso. I need to stop doing that, but pretty much battles going on between Lando, Russell, Alonso, and myself for the last few laps, and this is the outcome of it. Now, can I drop Fernando Alonso? It is an entire other story. I don't know if I can, but realistically, to finish P4 in this race is genuinely absurd to me, and I think it's just... The AI are really bad on hard tyres, because this is the same difficulty as SQ1, the same difficulty as the main race, sorry, not, can't speak, sprint race, the same difficulty as qualifying, and here we are. Sprint race, I finished P14. Sprint qualifying, I finished P18. Normal qualifying, P15. And yet, in the main Grand Prix, where it matters, I see myself up into P4 with four laps remaining. If I could bring this home, it's not only another unrealistic result, but another fucking amazing drive by Fat Krim. One thing you, of course, have to remember as well is that little incident with Joe Wang Yu where I overtook about, what, three or four cars, including Carlos Sainz, Hamilton, I think someone else as well. You have to consider that. That gave me four spots without really doing anything. And at the moment as well, I believe Hulkenberg is still lingering in the points, so... This could be a massive day for Team Haas. This could be a double points finish. But it's all up for grabs still. Hulkenberg in a fight with four other drivers. Come on, son. You can do this. I like how I just called him son, even though he's like exactly double my age. <laughs> Here comes Fernando Alonso. He's going to go for the outside line. Inside line, actually. But what he doesn't realize is that I now have DRS. The drag reduction system opens. And I believe this blood is about to be finished. Here we go. Round the outside. You know what we do. This is actually going to be a difficult overtake to make it stick. Give him the space. Nice. Back through. Lovely defending. Bosh. Penultimate lap starts. Lap times are dropping off, but they're still not awful. And my battle with Fernando Alonso continues. And this is going to go right down to the line, to be honest. If you remember... In my Senna career mode, I done Alonso on the line in the sprint race. And here we are fighting with him again, only this time 
in the house. And he ain't giving this one up whatsoever. And could also give a shout out, Yuki Tsunoda, comfortably at the moment sitting in P6. What a drive he's put in today. Fair play to you, sir. And even though I don't really like him all that much, I'm very neutral. I hope he smashes the living shit out of Liam Lawson because it would be really, really funny. I like Liam, but it would be jokes. Twitter would go mental and it'll be a fantastic day. But anyway, let's focus on this race and close it out strong. I've got a decent amount of VRS left, got about 80%, which should be enough, to be honest, to defend. Of course, Alonso's going to dump all of his as well. And here we go. The final lap begins. And I think I'm only going to use my overtake down the next two straights. There's no point using it into turn one. Fernando Alonso can't even get remotely close enough. Now, I'm going to try and avoid the slipstream, but I can't really do that. I'm going to start using a little bit of overtake. But I might actually let him go by here so I get the DRS. So I'm going to break a little bit later. Take the outside line. Have a strong exit like that. Now put the overtake on. Put on the burners. And na 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 na. Na 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 na. Way. Goodbye. Fernando Alonso, you have been tactically masterminded by someone with a head shaped like a watermelon. What an idiot. Now through the fast left for the final time. It's no longer that fast, to be honest. I'm so slow through there on these old tires. You might as well call it a medium speed corner. A little bit more overtaken. What a drive this has been. Once again, I'm finishing in P4. Another completely unrealistic result for the car. But this isn't even like, you know, circumstances or the difficulty being too low. That is just world-class driving with a couple of spins and crashes in between. Bang! I am so pleased with that because that is that is just me driving well. And I've not done that for a while, so that's lovely. Oliver Behrman, driver of the day. Of course, he is. Who else is it going to be? The driver that goes from P14 on the grid to P4. Yes, I thought shit house it with the safety car and, you know, the incident overtaking like five cars. But you got to make your own luck and take advantage of it. And that's exactly what I did. So shut up. Here's your final finishing order. I finished P5 overall because for some reason this screen goes throughout the whole weekend. You look at the actual race. P4 for Oliver Behrman. Only three temps off the fastest lap as well. That is a very, very beautiful race. And Hulkenberg does indeed manage to finish in the points. I feel like if he managed to stick with me with that DRS earlier on, he maybe could have got another place or two. But that's still a very nice result. A double points finish for the Haas team nets us 14 points, which means in the driver's... Um, honestly, just I'd say just sack off the standings at this point because I'm currently only 39 points away from the leader. And of course, I've got three podiums and a win. Um, and then the constructors, we sit P5. Uh, our fight is with Aston Martin this season, not Ferrari. I will make sure it's with Aston. Uh, for P5, it's going to be exciting. We've got a long way to go. We are not even halfway through the season yet. But... That was a fantastic race. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like I said, make sure to like the video because that is the most important thing. And if you really like these videos, please subscribe. Only subscribe if you genuinely enjoy these videos. And yeah, that's all from me. Thanks for watching. And I will see you lot tomorrow. Goodbye. Adios. See ya.